Hey everybody, we're back and it's time for another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And this time it's episode 93. Today we're going to define what is and is not a martial art. Should be fun. Now I'm Whistlekick's founder, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you don't know, makes the absolute best sparring gear, apparel, and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome the new listeners and thank everyone that's come back again. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more or buy over at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes for all of them, and a whole lot more are on another website, and that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Now, from either site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and you really should, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, great discounts, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for our Monday shows. So let's jump in. Nice short intro for you today. It's episode 93, and we're going to define what is, and thus what is not, a martial art. Now, this could prove to be a little bit unnerving. Might might get some hate mail out of this one. Probably not hate mail. Uh, you guys are always constructive when you offer feedback. And honestly, most of that feedback has been private uh, when, when it's been critical. And I don't know that that's necessary, but it's at least appreciated because there's a lot of respect that comes through from that. Uh, in fact, I was just talking with a guest whose episode will come out fairly shortly, and they were concerned about leaving their phone number on the air for people to get a hold of them. And, you know, this audience has been absolutely tremendous with the respect and the support for the show, for me, for Whistlekick, for the guests. And honestly, it was the first time I ever thought about it in that way. So I just want to thank everybody before we dig in. And it's because of that respect and that support that I feel comfortable going into a topic like this, like defining a martial art. I mean, right off the bat, that makes the hair on my neck stand up a little bit because what if what I say offends you? What if the way I draw the line slices what you practice a little bit differently than you would cut it, right? So I think discussion is good. I'm hoping some discussion comes out of this. And please understand that anything that I say today is not coming from a place of disrespect, but simply an academic thought process sort of exercise. So why would we want to define the martial arts? Now, as we see more and more of combat disciplines, and I think we can probably agree that martial arts is a subset of a combat discipline, some of them are going to qualify and some are not. Now, Whistlekick, our pledge mission is to serve the martial arts community, specifically the traditional martial arts community. So sort of selfishly, we need to know where those lines are. And it's not something that internally we've ever thought to define before, because we've sort of taken a we know it when we see it approach. But if you've been a listener to the show for a while, you know that we've had some people on that have sort of pushed those boundaries. And it's forced us to take a step back and look at what really is our target market. And rather than just have that discussion internally, we thought, hey, let's have that. And because you're along for the ride with us, let's make you part of that conversation. Now, that's not to say that we're never going to do things that benefit people outside the martial arts community. And a great example, you know, when we talk about traditional martial arts, we've been sort of up front. We've talked about the MMA, the mixed martial arts world, and how that that is not a market that we're looking to address. But honestly, we've seen a lot of MMA fighters, trainers, um, you know, whoever, people engaged in MMA that really like our shin guards and we're not going to tell them no you know we're not going to not offer those to those people we're not going to suggest that that may be a better option for someone but we're not going to set out to produce products for that market right so there, there's some overlap there but that's okay right because you know we're all trying to do our own thing and hey let's be real whistle kick is a business and we're not going to turn down someone that finds value in our products 
from purchasing them because they're not going to use them in something that we may more uh, traditionally find appropriate for our mission statement. So let's define what a martial art is. Now, to be honest, this is going to get a little bit nerdy because I come from kind of a, well, I mean, we've talked about it on the show. I'm a nerd. I'm a self-proclaimed nerd. Anyone that knows me knows I am a nerd. Uh, I double majored in college, and one of those majors was philosophy. So I have the context, the academic upbringing to be a nerd. And this is how I approach a challenge like this. If we have a something we're trying to define, there's a lot of ways that we want to slice it to get to the um, the ultimate outcome. You know, we we don't just want to consider a textbook definition. We want to consider the societal definition and things like that. Now on the show we've really talked to quite a few people who've come through the martial arts as we've defined them up until now. You know, anyone that's come on the show, I would say is a martial artist. And they've had lots of dis different experiences and they've come through different methodologies, different styles, different ways of practicing. And it, in fact, I think you could say that there's been very little in common with those methods and the way they practice. I mean, maybe from a 800 foot view, but when you really get down into it, the way that a Kung Fu practitioner and the way that a karate practitioner and the way a Hapkido practitioner operate are different. And that's why those styles have different names. But there's some common ground there. And we've reflected on that through quite a few of our episodes. And that common ground really is that their practice has improved them. It's made them better people. And so that's led to a loose, but admittedly a repeated statement that I've made on the air, that martial arts is really about personal development through this idea of combat. And so we could say a martial art is anything a person can use for personal development within the idea of combat. Okay, and that definition sort of works, but as I was really considering it, I realized that it wasn't necessarily as expansive in some ways and as specific in other ways as I really think a martial art should be. So, you know, what do I do? I'm part of the internet generation. I go to Wikipedia. What do they say? So Wikipedia has a broader definition and bear with me. It gets a little long winded. Martial arts are codified systems and traditions of combat practices, which are practiced for a variety of reasons as self-defense military and law enforcement applications, as competition, physical fitness, mental and spiritual development, as well as entertainment and the preservation of a nation's intangible cultural heritage. Ooh, that's a lot of words, right? A little bit out of breath. But you can see quite a bit of overlap, the mental and spiritual development, uh, the mention of the combat aspects. But that definition leaves a ton of room. Uh, in fact, by throwing the word entertainment in there, we, we really get pretty broad. Requiring an art to be all of those things certainly doesn't make sense. So I don't think we can really take too much from that Wikipedia definition. So we're kind of back to constructing our own. I think I've said this on the show. I know I've said this to plenty of people off air. I like to break down the term martial art. I mean, we've got two words. What do they mean independently? The word martial, the easiest way to define it is war-like combat, right? I mean, we've talked about that. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Now, art is where it gets a little bit tougher. Art means the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. Thus, if we trim off some of the words from the word, the definition of art, we combine those two, we get this sort of compiled definition could be warlike expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. That warlike piece is pretty easy. The creative piece is a bit harder, maybe a lot harder. Does sparring count as creative? It can be but it's also very reactive. So you could say it's not, but you could also say that if you look at the combined efforts of the two people that are sparring, there's something artistic there. You could look at it as a dance, a performance. Capoeira is certainly 
very artistic. It's beautiful to watch. I've I've practiced some capoeira. It's a lot of fun. And I think it satisfies all the things that we're looking for. Now, both our initial definition and the Wikipedia definition really lack that art piece, the element of expression. And the more that I consider that, it seems pretty important. If you've ever seen someone that did a truly beautiful martial arts form, or even just was very skilled in whatever their martial art was, there's beauty there. And I think you know it when you see it. I've always liked the definition of art or an artist, a great artist, whatever their discipline, leaves a piece of their soul in their work. And I have absolutely seen martial artists that are expressive at that level. So I think we can piece our definition back together and use a few synonyms that make more sense in this context. A martial art is an expressive, combat-themed practice that incorporates personal development. Seems simple, and it's pretty broad. If there's a problem with it, it's the fact that it's completely subjective, like a lot of things that we see in the martial arts, and it's the root of a lot of our arguments, right? Now, what I may consider expressive may not appear so to someone else, because a lot of that expression happens internally. Again, I, I go back to the idea of forms, kata, pumse, tol, whatever you want to call them, because it's something that is an important piece to me. It's the part of martial arts that I feel the most expressive about, most passionate, the part that really resonates with me the most. I can do a form in a deeply expressive way, but someone that watches it may not recognize it that way. Does that mean it wasn't expressive? No. Now, of course, the martial aspect is much easier to define, easy to see, but that art is kind of a kind of a rough spot. First and foremost, martial arts is an art. In the very term, the word art is the noun. Martial is really just an adjective. So that tells us that the expressive piece is absolutely key. Now, as I sat and I put together the notes for this episode, I really found myself resisting the idea of claiming what was and what was not a martial art. Admittedly, when I first set out in the notes, I thought we were going to have an easily defined term that we could just, you know, run something through and say, this is a martial art, this is not. But the deeper I got into it, the more I realized it's not that simple. Again, subjectivity makes that horrendously difficult to do. If art is personal, then so is the idea of expression. I might look at boxing and say that it's not a martial art, but you might look at it and think completely differently. Now, certainly, if we consider our example of boxing, the combat piece is there. The personal development piece can be there, though maybe it's less common than in some of the traditional arts like karate or taekwondo from Eastern philosophies. When I look at something like Krav Maga, I might dismiss it as a martial art but it certainly satisfies the martial definition. And can we really say that someone can't develop personally or express themselves through the practice of Krav Maga? Now, I've actually known people that are living proof of both of those things, the development and the expression pieces. What may make someone more comfortable, though, is the idea of a traditional martial art. And that's really the true focus of this show and of Whistlekick, traditional martial arts. So we're throwing another modifier into the piece. By adding the word traditional, it gives us this concept of historical significance. And even though we can certainly get bogged down in arguments about what art started when, I think it's easier for people to swallow a dividing line, even if we don't put a hard date or a hard definition on what that traditional piece is karate, taekwondo, kung fu, historical European arts, Kali Arnis. There are plenty more. I'm not going to name them all. It's a long list. But they generally share some similarities in their practice that makes them recognizable. There's this almost mystic quality, something that some people see as sort of religious. Now, boxing, while completely legitimate as a martial art, and despite being one of, if not the oldest martial art, it seems to lack that mystic quality, as does MMA, Krav Maga, wrestling, and 
plenty of others. Now, some of you are going to find plenty of fault with what I've said, and that's okay. That's even good. Debate is healthy, and I am the first person to admit if you change my mind. In fact, I'm pretty open to having my mind changed on this because I'm not convinced that I even fully agree with myself. I feel like this definition is as good as I'm going to get right now without having more perspective thrown at it. To revisit that definition, a martial art is an expressive, combat-themed practice that incorporates personal development. A martial artist, very simply, is someone that is engaged in the practice of martial arts. And a traditional martial art is something older than something else that martial artists will argue about. <laughs> right. So what do you think? Do you agree with our definition, my definition? Do you have another way of slicing it? However you feel, we want to hear from you personally. I want to hear from you. You can get to us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, all with the username Whistlekick, or you can leave a comment on our website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, and just leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Now, if there's someone you think should hear this episode, help us out, help them out. Go ahead, share it with them. Let's get some great discussion going, and it's the only way we're going to come to some definition that makes most people happy? Can we even do that in the martial arts? <laughs> now, if you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a show topic, go ahead, reach out to us. There's a forum on the website. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we're doing. You can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com. And our sparring gear is also available on Amazon. That's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Oh, before you go, just one last quick announcement. Martial Arts Weekend, July 8th, 9th, and 10th. The cutoff for signing up is Monday, June 20th. Once midnight rolls around, not the morning midnight, but the evening midnight, the end of the day on Monday the 20th. That's it. We've got to get our numbers into the venue for the food and the rooms and everything. So we need you to sign up before then. If you've got questions, best way, email us, info at whistlekick.com. Remember, 229, private room, all your meals, tons of instruction. This isn't just like two sessions a day. This is, I, I think, across the two days, we've got something close to 20 sessions. It's it's a lot, okay? Uh, we've got eight different instructors doing a ton of great work. We've got people from all over New England, New York, uh, down south. I mean, lots of great people are coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to make new friends. You're going to become a better martial artist, better person. Um, when we say personal development, you will be better personally developed. Uh, so uh, really hope to see you there. Really looking forward to it because personally, I just put together an event that I wanted to do. So <laughs> I wanted to participate in it, not run. I wanted to be there and learn from all these people. And I hope you do too. So that's all. Take care and we'll talk to you soon.